Today we'll be examining the resonance and combustion characteristics of a Reiki tube. Uh, this lab seeks to demonstrate uh, the effects of combustion in a controlled environment, specifically the effects related to vibration and resonance. Uh, this is where the Reiki tube comes in. It's a kind of pulse jet that uses an internal heat source, in this case a flame, to cause pressure and velocity differences along the tube, uh, moving air through as a consequence. Uh, when the flame is placed in the right spot in the tube, these sinusoidal oscillations um, and pressure cause a resonance frequency to be heard, um, which we are examining in this lab. Uh, the real world value of this is an understanding um, combustion induced resonance comes um, in designing real engines where the resonance is no longer a desired characteristic. Uh, the Reiki tube used in this experiment is shown to the right, uh, and this is modified in the sense that it vents to the outside instead of straight up, and a small fan is used. Um, to generate updraft through the tube. Uh, during this experiment, the combustor is varied um, by a few inches uh, in order to examine the impact on the resonance tube. Uh, five positions are examined throughout the experiment. Uh, the frequency and intensity of the combustion flame is measured using a photomultiplier, uh, which is calibrated to pick up um, on certain light frequencies in the flame and convert that to an output voltage uh, that's seen um, right by the flame there. Um, and along with the length of the tube, uh, there's three piezoelectric pressure sensors or pressure transducers. Um, they're placed equidistant, equidistant from each other. Um, they can see, be seen the uh, long copper tube sticking out from the, the Reiki tube itself. Um, and they measure pressure op oscillations through the tube during the test. Uh, so in order to understand the results, I'd like to go over some of the cases examined here. So we have five cases at five different positions from the zero point on the tube which is 18 inches from the bottom opening. Um, of note here, there's a valve on the side that can be open or closed. One case is tested with this open, um, and this prevents resonance by venting air out the side instead of up through the tube. Uh, so here we have the sound pressure level, peak frequency, PMT voltage, and PMT frequency for each case. Uh, of note here, um, the cases without fr um, resonance frequency are clearly shown in the bottom figure on the peak frequency figure um, since they have a peak frequency of 1 rather than around that 94.7 mark which is calculated um, based on um, conditions in the, in the lab at the time. Um, these um, resonant non-resonant cases also correspond to a drop in sound pressure level um, at the third pressure transducer which is the highest one on the tube um, as seen in the first graph. Um, and here we have uh, the phase angle of the photomultiplier um, as well as the relative phase angles of the top and bottom transducers to the center transducer uh, in each case. Um, one thing of note here, um, in the two non-resonant cases, so two and four, um, we see that there is a 180 degree um, relative phase angle um, between those two transducers um, from the top and bottom. Uh, so conclusions here. Uh, so in this experiment, um, we can clearly see um, that sound pressure level um, can be um, kind of indicates um, when or when not the tube or when the tube is in resonance or not. Um, so we have a case where the sound pressure level drops at the top of the uh, top of the tube when it is not in resonance, um, whereas it remains relatively steady um, throughout the tube when it is in resonance. Um, and furthermore, um, we see that third phase angle um, stand out as um, one of the one of the important conclusions here. Um, so, um, um, what that indicates is that um, the tube is actually still vibrating, um, but um, in that case, um, we have a 180 degree phase shift that's causing destructive interference along the length of the tube, um, preventing us from hearing hearing any noise um, caused by oscillations in the sound. Um, and the pressure within the tube. Um, and I just um, would like to take a minute here to point out some um, potential error in our, in our experiment. Um, so we see on the left here, this is case one, um, where the uh, flame is at its zero position and the valve is closed. Um, on the right here, these set of graphs are raw data for case two, where the valve is open. Um, so case one, we're in expecting to see perfect resonance, um, and that is pretty clear here. Um, case two, we're expecting to see no resonance, but obviously these pressure um, pressure readings still have a sinusoidal or a bit of a sinusoidal shape to them, um, 
and we still see a spike at that 95 um, hertz mark uh, along each of these. So obviously um, the tube is not perfectly um, out of resonance. There's still um, some some um, unique conditions playing a role in that in the room at the time. Um, but yeah, thank you, thank you for listening. That's that's all I have today.